Hello everyone, I'm Prowl, and I want to talk to you about a new game, kinda, that's about to release called Last Epoch. Probably just gotta watch out for like chance. So currently there are two powerhouses in the ARPG genre of game. Path of Exile, which is not only going 10 years strong now, but it's enjoying so much success from no life for ARPG players that Grinding Gear Games is actually getting close to finishing a Path of Exile 2. But the game at the same time is also closed off to a lot of different players as it requires like 87 different external tools, a math degree, and 34 hours of gameplay per day just to understand and play the game properly without ruining your character. And on the other side of that coin, we have Diablo 4, the latest successor of the long running Diablo series of games that you may be able to tell by the gray in my beard and hair that I started playing myself back in 1996. And Diablo 4 has enjoyed great success in total numbers of copies sold and its peak player counts. And it's known as the home of the normie, or as Asmongold likes to say, the game is for the dads out there that have seven jobs, 18 kids, and two hours a month to play. And this does show in the game plan, which while fun, is fairly simple, and there isn't a whole lot of depth or end game, and honestly progresses incredibly fast. Recently, Rudijo hit level 100 in under 13 hours of playtime on a character. So the pacing of the game is maybe too fast for some people. Because of these facts, Diablo fans typically want nothing to do with Path of Exile, and Path of Exile fans simply just laugh embarrassingly at Diablo 4. And while there are plenty of players and creators that sort of fall in the middle, largely speaking, the communities are very tribalistic. And this is where I piss everybody off by saying, what if I told you both games kind of suck? I'm just messing with you guys. I do run another YouTube channel full time, so I sort of sit like right in the middle of these two like groups of players. On one hand, I do feel like a dad that has eight jobs and 19 kids, even though I just run another full time channel and I have two kids. Um, but on the other hand, I enjoy depth in a game and I like trying to figure out mechanics and intricacies and I want a little bit more to chew on when I play my game. I do like to nerd out and min max the games that I do find time to play outside of my main channel. But the thought of playing Path of Exile, a game that requires a lot of external tools and understanding and research and a lot of time outside of game just to try to make your time inside a game kind of fun and like worthwhile sounds like something I don't even want to jump into. So I've never even played Path of Exile. I've watched some people play it, but I haven't played it myself because of that intimidating factor of not wanting the, the time commitment to even be able to enjoy my time playing the game. On the other hand, I have played a lot of Diablo 4, and while the game has been really fun and enjoyable, but on the other hand, once you play it for a little bit and the like nostalgia wears off and the wow factor of the cool graphics and you get used to the gameplay, you kind of just realize that there's not really anything to do in the game. There's not a lot of variance in how you build your characters. Like there's a couple of decent specs or a few decent specs per like per character, but there's not really a lot to chew on there. There's not a lot of variance inside of that. And then once you get to the end game, you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. And there's no point in even doing it because there's nothing to challenge you once you get to the end. So I haven't even played season three because I don't, what, why? What, what, what is there for me to do to watch a little pet run around that I'm just going to like kill everything myself anyways? No, thanks. Also, generally their season plan is really flawed. They have a even and an odd number season team. And those teams work six months on their season in a rotating fashion to give you a new season every three months, which is cool. That's fine. But anything they come out with, they pretty much just throw it all in the trash when that season ends. It seems like a waste of developer time, a waste of player time when they could be using those things to further build on the game and maybe one or two little things stick around. But like 95% of what they do just gets tossed in the bin, never to be seen again. And that brings me to the real reason for today's video. Me, who I would call like a normie plus, like I kind of fit into the normie category and I understand what the normie and the first time player and the Diablo 4 players are about, but I also understand what's so appealing about a game like Path of Exile and what the no lifers love. And I would love to have that much time to just throw into a game. So here's my opinion about Last Epoch. First of all, it hit early release several years ago on Steam, so it has been continuously developed with community feedback for years now, which is a great sign because the community, the people that really love the game, are actually helping steer the ship 
and tell the developers what the game needs as it's being developed for a long period of time. And that's almost always going to have a good effect on the game. The developers are paying attention to what the players are saying while also keeping within their vision of the game. And it's set to release on February 21st, which is just a mere few days away. Diablo fans, Path of Exile fans, and people that have never played an ARPG before or think that the, the category is kind of interesting but have been out of it for a while, they're all going to enjoy this game. So while I don't want to pretend to be an expert at the game, I haven't been playing it for years. I've been playing it for several days now. I've put some time in. I've watched a lot of videos of what other people's gameplay is. I've watched some streams. I've talked to people online. I've messed with build planners. I have a decent enough understanding of the game. And what I can say is the game is fun. Like, it's really fun. And it strikes a very nice median between Too Simple Diablo and Too Complex PoE. So what I'd like to do first, just to kind of help you get started in the mindset of what Last Epoch is like, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how you skill up in the game and how expansive that is in the early game. And that's gonna kind of set the way that you should think about Last Epoch for all of its different systems throughout the entire game. Okay, so when you start the game out, you come to the character selection screen, the class selection screen. This is pretty much true of any ARPG game, right? You get to go through, look at your class, and I'm not going to sit here and go over those. You can look at some like beginner's guide video. Maybe I'll even do one at some point uh, for it. But I just wanted to show you when you click on any of these classes, you actually get a pretty decent amount of base information. You get base information about what the class is about. You get to see what some of their key skills are. Um, you can actually look through them. You can even hold down the alt button to tell you more about that particular skill, which is kind of neat. Um, but you also get to see the ascendancy classes. So you start out with your base class and then you have your mastery or ascendancy classes down through here. Um, you can see here the rogue has three different ones, blade dancer, marksman and falconer. And then each one of these core classes, these base classes here, has a set of three mastery classes that it can go to as well that will have different things that are unique about it. Now, once you're in the game and you're leveling up your character, you start as this base class. I have a Sentinel here that's a character that I've been playing recently. And as you level up, you earn these different skills as you go. You can see we have eight of them here. Now, these skills, they're pretty straightforward and easy to understand. One thing that Epoch does really well is they give you some good information that they're telling me how much damage per second this is doing, that there's no mana cost. They tell me what tags scale it. And I can even hit Alt to get some additional information about the skill. This is true for all of them. Now, I said the word tree, and the re reason I said the word tree is because each skill has its own skill tree. If I were to pick one that I'm not specced in right now, let's say uh, Vengeance, you could see that Vengeance has its own skill tree here. And this could look confusing at first to maybe say like a, a normie Diablo player, whereas somebody on Path of Exile could probably look at this and make sense of it pretty quickly. But these skill trees for the most part are pretty themed. You go down a particular path, the things in that path are usually related to each other in some way to where you're building up power or skill in some particular thing as you go. So for example, I come over here to Rive and I have a Void Knight spec, which I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But I have points I'm spending in Rive that are going towards making it a more like Void based skill as opposed to a regular melee based skill. You get a total of 20 points to spend inside of any given skill tree. And the way you get those points is you level up the skill. The skill does not necessarily level up the same pace as you do. It levels up based on it being an active skill that you have selected. So up here in the top, you see all of these skills that I'm specialized in. I've selected three skills so far to specialize in. And I have two more that I'll earn as I continue to level up. So basically, when you have this skill equipped and you level up, you get XP, it levels up that particular skill as well. Um, any points that you spend in the skill tree can be respect. You can even remove the entire skill as a specialization if you want to, to pick something else. There's little penalties for these things. I'm not going to dive into them really deeply, but the penalties aren't that big. You have a small penalty that you get for respecking or that you get for taking a skill out and swapping it completely. Um, but you can you can continue to do that. Now, alongside of doing these skills as you level up, you also have passive skills that you earn as well. These passive skills, you see I have Sentinel selected. You'll start out with this. And as you spend points in the passive skill tree, this little bar right here will continue to move off to the right. 
each major intersection is typically going to be five skill points spent. So to get to this first intersection right here, you will have spent five skill points to get to this one, 10, 15, and to get to this one, it'll be 20. Now, once you get to a certain point in the campaign, you will get to pick your ascendancy class. Now I selected Void Knight. This is a final choice. You pick one of these, that's what you got. You can't change it, okay? Now this works very similarly, it is really easy as well, but instead of gaining more skills as you level up for your Void Knight, Forge Guard, whatever it is that you pick as your mastery class, you instead get it by your passive skill tree. So once I reach 20 points spent in my passive skill tree for the Sentinel, I can then put points into either one of any one of these trees as well. So I can go over to Void Knight and I can start to put passive points here. You see down at the bottom, as I spin uh, skill points in the passive tree down here, I unlock more and more of these possible abilities that I can use. So you start out with one skill, a racing strike, and then as you progress across here, you earn other ones. Everything at this point works the same as what we've already discussed. You're going to look through, see what passive skills you want that are going to support the build that you're doing. You're going to continually add in the uh, skills that you're going to specialize in to further develop. Like I have a point here that I can spend in a racing strike, which I have at level 11 right now. And essentially, you're going to do this to all support your character. At a glance, without knowing anything, it looks a little confusing. It looks a little overwhelming. The big trees and all of the stuff that's in the passive tree. But as you start to play the game, it actually all starts to make sense pretty well. To where anybody, somebody that's experienced or inexperienced at ARPG games, can pretty quickly understand and build up their own character. So what this boils down to is, for the most part, anybody can build a character and it be like viable in the game it can make it a pretty good ways into the game it could beat the story it can make it into the end game and do end game content there aren't many builds that are not viable as long as you're actually putting some level of thought into it you're reading the things that you're spending points into you can make your own build that plays your character the way that you want to play it and will be effective at doing it so like this character here i wanted to take a racing strike and i wanted it to have a really huge area effect when i use it so i've been growing the size of it i've been giving it more damage as i go it creates these void rifts when i erase enemies off the map there's like all sorts of really cool things that you can do with making whatever skill that you want fit the type of play style that you want it to have now like any game like this that's, that's good and, and like worth the time to play the the challenge can get harder and harder as you get deeper and deeper into the game so to really challenge like the end of end game content you're going to have to have a cohesive build. You're going to have to have skills that all support each other, that work together. You're going to have to have good gear that's balanced, that works with your build. And maybe not every single build is viable, but there are still many of them, even into the late game, that are as long as they're built properly with purpose as opposed to just piecemeal together and un and the skills like don't relate to each other now that was just meant to be a very basic overview for you I'm, I'm not trying to teach you the game i want you to understand how the game has depth so that you path of exile players see like okay like there's something for me to do like i have a lot that i can look into in the game there's crafting there's trading there's all sorts of like elaborate systems that start out simple to get into but have a lot of depth to them to where you can really spend a lot of time figuring it out to men max your character but at the same time that that like barrier to entry is really low so the um, couch dads that just want to play a few hours a week like you can hop into this game too understand it fairly easily as long as you're paying attention and you're like actually putting forth some effort into the game and you can enjoy the game as well it fits in that happy median that we've been talking about so what is my final verdict well being someone that's between that normie and that no life nerd at a $35 purchase price and with a developer that states that all future content and expansions will be free. I'm looking at you, Diablo. You're going to try to charge me $70 to keep playing your game every year. I'm not doing it. This game is a steal. So if you enjoy ARPG games now, have in the past, or you want to give the genre a try for the first time, then I think this is a great game for you to jump into. If you want to see the game more, or if you've already started and you have some questions, then 
you should catch me live. I, I stream right here on YouTube on this channel, as well as on my Twitch channel, Prowl8413. You can look at me there. I multi-stream, so you can find me live both places when I go live. Come hang out in the stream with me. Learn the game with me. I don't know everything about it yet, but as I discover new things, I like to try to learn more about them. Anything that I discover in a game, I want to understand it. I, I try not to let anything go by me without understanding exactly what it does. So if you want to have fun while watching the stream and learning with me and helping me figure things out at the same time, or maybe you're already a pro, you know everything, hop into the stream and help me out a little bit. I could use that too. Uh, while I don't have the time to spend 60 hours a week in game, because as Asman says, I have six jobs and 19 kids, I do enjoy learning everything that I can about the game, making my own builds, having fun while I try to min-max any character that I play. So thanks for watching today. I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, there's a like button down below. Go ahead and press it and consider dropping that subscribe. Thanks so much. And I'll see you out there in last epoch.